Right, let's talk about liquefied natural gas. Golar. Golar LNG is getting a jump apparently on the competition in BC. The company is converting an LNG carrier into an LNG export terminal and the idea is that it's going to float in the Douglas Channel and funnel the gas to Asian markets. Now the ship is still a year or two from finding its way to the region but the company could have first mover advantage says our next guest. We're joined by Keith Schaefer, editor Oil and Gas Bulletin. Great to see you Keith. Thanks for having me Andy. So tell us quickly who Golar is and what's the Norwegian role? Well, Golar has been a real innovator in this sector for the last several years. They, they've been pioneering a lot of new technology. And one of the things they did a couple of years ago was create the first floating natural gas import terminal. And those are called FSRUs, uh, floating storage and regasification units. Here in Canada, what they're going to do is design the world's first floating export terminal floating liquid natural gas. So as you said, they're going to design this over the next couple of years and hopefully the Douglas Channel project up by Kitimat will be the very first in the world where you have floating liquid natural gas terminals. I thought um, Shell was working on a giant thing called Prelude uh, off Australia. Yes, it's going to be a massive project. It's going to be the largest ship in the world, about the size of six aircraft carriers. The beauty of this project with Golar here on the west coast of Canada is that it is going to make a lot of small amounts of gas economic. Prelude only works on massive TCF projects, trillion cubic feet. This is going to work in a lot of places around the world where there's only small amounts of gas. And I I'm excited for Canada. I think it's going to give us a big leg up on the race to supply LNG to Asia. And will they actually liquefy the gas on board this vessel? Right. So now when gas gets liquefied, it goes like 600 to 1, mm -hmm. a, a huge condensing. And that gets done on these huge land-based import terminals that cost billions of dollars, take up hundreds of acres. And now this is going to get done on a much smaller scale, economically, on a ship. And, and it's not just to say that there will be one ship. They're, they could end up having two or three or four ships in the channel, depending on how big they're able to make this project. Uh, how will they get, will the natural, natural gas be able to get to the BC coast? Are there pipelines there already? Right now, the Spectra pipeline isn't that big. It's just uh, a little over 100 million cubic feet a day. But there are plans to make it as big as either one to even four BCF a day, billion cubic feet a day, over the next few years as the bigger players in the sector, Shell and Apache, get ready with their projects. But I think th w what's exciting here is that for the scale of project that they're looking at, they need that big pipeline and they need all that infrastructure. Golar and the BC LNG Cooperative here, they can do this on a very small scale mm -hmm. and make money. So they think they, can, as they think they can deliver gas to Asia for 6 to $7 per MCF so, and, and have that ready in two, three years. So I'm, like I say, pretty exciting stuff for Canada, really. Fascinating, because I think the giant projects are talking about the end of the decade uh, to get those going. It, it has been a big year for LNG in Canada. They started off this year saying, yes, we're going to have it ready by 2015. Then in the spring, they moved it back to 2017. And now they've already moved it back to 2019. So for Golar to come in with a small BC LNG cooperative and say, hey, we think we can get this mm -hmm. done on a much smaller scale and get it ready for 2015, that, that's a big deal for Canada. Got to leave it there. Keith Schaefer, thanks very much. Keith is editor of the Oil and Gas Bulletin.